I am the great, great grandson of people who were born in this country as slaves. I'm the grandson of individuals who worked all of their productive lives as sharecroppers in the rural South. I'm the son of two people who worked right beside Martin Luther King in 1956 in Montgomery, Alabama as a part of the Montgomery bus boycott. My name is Jonathan Smith, and I'm the Vice President for Diversity and Community Engagement here at St. Louis University, and I, where I serve as a faculty member in African American Studies. This morning, I greet you from our Lippitt Clock Tower Plaza, where six years ago, I stood out here alongside our students, our staff, my faculty colleagues, community members, my neighbors, and national activists from around the country in the wake of the deaths of Michael Brown Jr. in Ferguson and Von Derrick Myers Jr. in Shaw. And Von Derrick is the son of our family member, Von Myers Sr. We stood here six years ago to protest injustice, brutality, and systemic racism. And I stand here today to assert our full commitment to continuing that struggle against those injustices. But before I talk about where we are, I think it's important to talk about where we've been. Because St. Louis University is a 200 year old institution, our institution has long had ties to and been affected by systemic racism. In 1823, Jesuits from Maryland walked here with six enslaved African-Americans. In 1944, Claude Heidhouse stood in our college church and argued strongly for the integration of the university. In 1970, black students confronted our administration and argued for and fought for the development of an African-American studies program. In 2014, through a collaborative effort of faculty, administrators, students, activists, and community members, we crafted what has become known as the Clock Tower Accords. Those accords called us in community to commit ourselves to changing things here at the institution. Since 2014, we have done work to advance those accords. We have permanently increased the budget for our African American Studies program. We have worked very hard to increase access to an education here at St. Louis University for African American students, particularly those here in our region. We have instituted the St. Peter Claver Scholarship through the generous donation of, an, of a black alumni. Our Black Alumni Association has created the Pioneers of Inclusion Scholarship. Just this year, we instituted the Donald Suggs Scholarship to be given to current students to make sure that we retain them and they complete their education with a minimal amount of debt. This spring, we also decided to, be, to make our admissions process test optional. And we believe that all of these measures will do work towards making that education more accessible to black students, to first generation students, and to students of lower socioeconomic status. Because we know that increasing access does not begin in high school, our pre-college access programs office has worked hard to create programs through our TRIO grant to reach elementary and middle school students in St. Louis. Our office also supports the Shut It Down program started by our former colleague, Nor Dr. Norm White. This program goes into St. Louis City Public Schools to help principals and teachers reduce the number of suspensions and to reduce the trauma that our elementary school students experience. Since 2014, we have had speakers as diverse as Angela Davis, Andrew Young, Janet Mock, Laverne Cox, all people that we've brought to campus under the auspices of the Office of Diversity and, Co and Community Engagement and in accordance with our commitment to bring a diversity se speaker series to campus. While I am quite proud of the work that we have done and the steps that we have made, I know and fully understand that it is not enough. To demonstrate our commitment, not only to the Clock Tower Accords, but to ending systemic racism and social justice in our society, Dr. Pastello will call together a working group of our community 
to review our progress with the Accords and to help us chart a path towards the future. Because I am who I am, I understand that the weight of systemic racism does not fall on abstract groups. It falls on individuals and their families. It fell on my grandfather, Joe Nathan Myricks. It fell on the families of Ahmaud Arbery. It fell on the Tatiana Jefferson, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, Tamir Rice, Michael Brown, and it fell on Von Derrick Myers Jr. and his family. Nearly two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation and 155 years ago today, General Granger in Galveston, Texas, issued General Order Number Three. General Order Number Three affirmed to all that last group of enslaved African Americans that all slaves were free. I suggest to you that the Clock Tower Accords were our Emancipation Proclamation, and what we need to work towards is our General Order Number Three. Happy Juneteenth, Billikens.